10 October, Southern Colorado. We had a storm pushing on through. It was an intense Kim Terling day across the mountain west yesterday. And now that we're in the storm, sometimes they kind of fade away. But as we can see, they are, they're out and at it today, setting up these angles and grinding these clouds against each other. You can see them rolling here. The different wave patterns there, 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 there. There's the, there's the wave pattern. More waves here. Look at that. Nice big. Again, we've got waves coming this way, and then there's an energy pushing across them. And that creates this little curl that we've got. And then the ribbing, the rippling, getting rather pronounced right in through here. But adjacent to this, this field of rippling clouds, we've got an opening. And this is how it almost always is. Very sharp defined boundary on the eastern side, and it's oval in shape, and we have seen these whole punch clouds time and time again. And in the middle of it, we have a cirrus kiss, where one side weeps down, and the other side comes down to meet it. So we have this seam, but it's a Fall Street cloud. And on one side, you'll have rippling, and on the other side, a whole different pattern of clouds, a whole different behavior. And these are the holes that I'm talking about from space. You'll see those on the satellite imagery, but that's the rippling today. It's intense, it's windy, it was a mild night last night. We'll get some snow up to the mountains to the north, hopefully. Get that snowpack going. In any case, we'll do a map discussion today and uh, just do a little more weather talk because uh, October, November is some of my favorite time of the year. Look at this huge crest, huge wave rolling over, and then the, the other ripples coming right across it at 90 degrees. It creates that ultimate vorticity, that ultimate churn, that ultimate spin. And that creates the clouds. Without the rotation, you don't have the clouds. Watching the time lapse that I've got going to the day, you'll see all of these clouds, they don't bubble thermodynamically, they roll, they spiral as they're pushed along. Everything is a spiral. Hey guys, uh, what well, promised you a little bit of a map discussion since it's been so bloody long since we've done it. We've got some interesting weather going on out west, but I commented when I was on the camera looking outside about an apparent pattern change in the weather or more significantly the climate in the western states and we're starting by going back a month back to september 10. so nearly a month oh, it is a month ago a month ago today and data released on the 12th of september to look at the the state of the drought across the western u.s western kansas southeastern colorado northern new mexico texas all littered with drought and in some cases it is exceptional drought that being the darkest brown through Goodland, Hayes, Kansas, uh, uh, Atwood, uh, down into Lamar, Colorado, in and around Flagstaff, well, not quite Flagstaff, but west of Flagstaff, towards Snowflake, Gallup, New Mexico, and so forth, uh, in around Reno, Nevada. As we look forward, just one month after the Boulder floods, after the heavy, heavy rains and the incredible snow call, fall across Rapid City, South Dakota, where they broke all time October records for snowfall, the quantity of water that has fallen across the northern plains and the central and eastern Rockies is monumental. And in some places in the desert southwest, Douglas, Arizona, for example, had their greatest monsoon ever, breaking the old record uh, set back in 1919 of something like 12 inches, but they broke it with nearly 20 inches worth of rainfall, that being Douglas, Arizona. And that story is not unique to Douglas. It is across New Mexico, Arizona, southern Utah, Nevada. Those places, an incredible change in our weather. So what we're seeing is a return to more winter weather. We are looking at the surface an analysis, all updated to get you the afternoon one. We noticed that the ice pack began rebuilding in mid-September, and it was 60% greater. Even if it was a slushy ice that remained, there was ice up there. Obviously far too fragile to deal with uh, bears and walruses and so forth. So we're still having that ecological change here on the coast where we have, you know, the animals still holding on to land. The pack ice is just so far away. They can't get to it. Nevertheless, we're at that time of year where the rebuilding has begun. And the pack ice in 2013 was substantially larger, more left over than in 2012. Does that signal a longer term change? I propose that it does simply because the sun is cooling off. The sun is simmering down. When that happens, Earth's climate cools. To continue on this folly that the planet will continue to warm because of CO2 is a, is, is, is a folly and it will, it will be a mistake. 
All right, here's the storm. I'm about right here, so the low pressure is just blasted through. You'll see it go through on the time lapse, and it is incredible. The dust will pick up, the rain will come, and now we're still dealing with the bits of snow. Out ahead of it, it is warm. It is a warm, warm, warm October day. Nice high pressure across the Appalachians, the Ohio Valley. Nice return flow with 70s and 80s all the way into, into, uh, into Minnesota with high dew points, and that moisture will feed this developing storm. We'll take a look at the satellite. I'm right here. And so we've been in and around rain showers, turning snow showers. I'm looking out the mountains and it's obscured by light snow even as we speak. Go to the satellite. I want to look at the, the west and you'll see the, the arcing of this storm, this big storm. I want to do water vapor for many reasons because with this we can begin to tease out the chemtrails. We know the chemtrails sequester water. Those particulates are highly attractant to water, especially when they are charged. And we see that all across Oregon and Washington today, more trails. And if you're looking at this on YouTube, please use the 720p resolution. You will begin to see the details that I'm, I'm talking about. What I'm going to do, here's the storm, the center of it right in here across the San Juan's about to roll overhead. We'll see it on time lapse. I'm going to look through a couple of visible images. This is the first one. I'm going to give, show you the timestamp here. It's 1715, so 1115 in the morning for me. And it's these holes. I'm interested in holes, and I have been showing you holes since you've been watching me. I'm interested in these holes because these holes then pivot the weather. Out of this hole, you can see another imprint there, but it is this rippling, this billowing, and it is out of this billowing where we are finding the crazy weather. So holes here, and you can see this one connected to this one, connected to this one. All right, I want to show you uh, three hours later, 2215Z, again on the 10th two other sets of holes that have been bound or at least anchored by the storm. You can see the rippling running between another set here and just about anywhere you look, you'll be able to find some kind of resonance. I want to jump back and step through these here so you can see how they form. These will be at 15 minute increments. And here we go. One, two, three. And the, uh, a hole begins to open up here, its counterpart here. You could even see an opening here with a large square cloud with an opening, a hole in the middle. And then about 30, 40 miles to the south, there's another one forming. And so what we see are these planes guiding these resonance patterns, anchored by holes. A couple here, again, the corresponding ones up here over Cheyenne and Laramie, Wyoming. Holes in between, you can see the connective patterns running across mountain ranges as these holes manifest and the ripples then and the precipitation is accentuated underneath them. You can see the tracks, how they connect across 100, 150 miles. There should not be that kind of a connection between them, but yet they are. There they are, and even a little more pronounced as we move to 2300Z and so forth. So it is those ripplings underneath this is where we see the accentuation of the precipitation. And there's the current radar superimposed on top. Look at the old wide scale picture. The reason the weather's happening in the States right now is we've got an omega block situation across Europe. And until this pattern with this deep, deep low now sitting over France with near wintertime um, height levels, as you can see a 5, 543 height line right there across Belgium. This deep low sits in place and begins to wobble across France and then across Central Europe as we move through the weekend with a stacked high, a nice tall high sitting off the coast of Norway between Norway and Iceland. Until this couplet breaks down, the weather here in the States is going to remain largely unchanged. As we can see, this pattern still into Tuesday next week. Maybe finally by Wednesday, we see a deep, deep North Atlantic low pushing through Western Europe, and that will dislodge this pattern. When that happens, this deep low that is in the Western States right now, you can see it south of Las Vegas, swinging overhead. This is the one we just looked at visually. Swings to the north, reinforced with more energy dropping down from the Pacific into the Pacific Northwest, almost repeating the same pattern. But what happens is the east stays warm through the coming week, and then the upper Midwest and northern Rockies become and remain unsettled. This incredibly dynamic storm 
um, left a little moisture behind, only about seven, eight hundreds here at the house, when nothing was expected that significant then, especially when we're seeing um, a line of thunderstorms literally blow up as it crossed, crossed over me here in Creston in uh, eastern Sawatch County, and then as it crossed the Songrays in their 14,000 foot peaks here. You'll see that on time lapse. You'll see the storms blow up. You'll see it kick up the dust and then blow on through here and end up with about uh, just a bit more than two, two and a half hours worth of precip, which was not expected. The models were generating at best about a 30, 35% chance of precip. Granted, we were underneath the core of the storm and we saw some incredible development along the cold front. And I'll show you that on satellite imagery. The rippling, the geometry is just amazing. So the storm's now departing to our east. The temperatures have really cooled off. We began the day in the 50s with our peak at about nine in the morning. And then the storm rolled through, the front has come on through, and now we've got some clear air. At the San Juans off to the west, about um, 60, 70 miles away, and you can see the, the groves of Aspen, and then uh, the remnants of this storm working across uh, the San Juans. It's been amazing. If we were still in this, this deep, deep drought agenda, we wouldn't have had this moisture. And I've said it before, and I've written it a couple of times, I believe the pattern's changed. I believe the drought that has been happening out west is being drawn to an end. For whatever reason and what the impetus was to do that, I do not know. But this is what I'm seeing, is we are seeing a wholesale change in the weather in the western states. Something has changed. Some agenda has changed. This should be a very interesting winter. We should get a lot of snow. And it'd be great, because these people just don't give up 20 years of drought to replace it and, 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 and wipe it away in a matter of months. Something's changed. Now I'm hearing a jet overhead. So they're aware and monitoring the storm. And we're dealing with Tesla's technology. We're dealing with the, the, the physics of the etheric. The physics of the organ is what they're using. And this is why traditional meteorologists and the weather industry is completely ignorant. They have no idea what the etheric or the organ is. So they can't understand what they're seeing. They can't diagnose why the climate is going wonky. It's the etheric field is being played with. It's the etheric field. And Harp is a very small player. But the powers that be are glad to have Harp getting the blame. It keeps everybody misdirected from where the real action lies. And a bloody hell is not with Harp. There's other far, far cheaper technologies to use. This form's shape is getting even more pronounced. Nice sharp edge coming together here. We have the extensions coming off, giving us this angle, intersecting with this angle. And as that happens, as you have this kind of grinding, this kind of sweeping together, we're getting almost like a, look at this, up, step down, over, step out. And you'll see, almost always see cumulus clouds, or at least forming with this shape. They'll have like a hard-nosed edge, and then they'll, they'll, they'll serrated edge off the edge or off the end. That's odd. It's very odd. But we're still getting some development down here as this rotation, this grinding is so pronounced, is so strong. Very curious to see what this looks like on time lapse. Kind of need to get Scoot home to open up the iris a little bit since we're getting darker. In any case, look at that. So here we are, we were watching those waves not an hour ago, and I pointed them out, watching how they were formed, it was easy to see. Once you can interpret the sky and the waveforms, you can forecast the weather. And so, that kick turned into almost a mesocyclone, and now we've got hail coming out of the sky. Is this low pressure system, and that funky formation come out of the sky, or uh, generates this ice crystals, this hail coming out of the sky, with this incredibly unstable formation. All right, you can read the waves and you can forecast this, guys. You can do it. It is possible. Good night.